Even today, there are still quite a lot of objects in our own solar system that we're still not very familiar with. This is such object. This is called Orcus, an object that was discovered in 2005 with its little moon called Vanth. Today we're going to be talking about Orcus and you'll learn what it's all about and why it's known as anti-Pluto. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so let's start our exploration with a bit of a landing right here in using Space Engine. We're going to land on Orcus and we're going to take a look at its surface as well. So as you can see, this is somewhat similar to many other dwarf planets we've visited before. Uh, similar to Pluto, similar to uh, Haumea, similar to many other objects. The surface here is essentially mostly ice and with a bit of methane and possibly some other materials. Uh, but all we know about it, because we haven't actually visited this object yet, uh, all we know about it is that it is a little bit smaller than Pluto, but has a very similar orbit and very similar composition. And it has a, its own satellite that's actually not much smaller than it. And this satellite is called Vanth. And this is what the satellite looks like. We can actually land on it. And this is the moon of Orcus. And so the surface of the moon of Orcus is a little bit smoother, but the, all of this is obviously a guesswork because we have never been here and will probably not uh, visit this object for many, many, many years. Anyway, so what we're going to do today is we'll talk a bit more about both Orcus and Vanth. This is actually what their orbits look like if you look at them in Space Engine. And we're going to discuss them in a little bit more detail, specifically why they're kind of important and what's interesting about them. And now using Universe Unbox 2, let's escape Earth and go into our outer solar system and try to find Orcus. So first of all, this is a trans-Neptunian object, so it's going to be found somewhere past Neptune. There's Neptune right here. And second of all, it's, um, it's an object that has a surprisingly similar orbit to Pluto. So here is Orcus. We're going to zoom into it just to see what it looks like in Universe Unbox. And so here it's a relatively dark dwarf planet. Uh, with uh, a radius of about 490 kilometers and a mass that is something like 0.002% of mass of Earth or about 2% of the mass of Moon, which is even smaller than Pluto. Uh, this is actually about 3% of the biggest dwarf planet, which is Aries. So if I were to add Aries here, Aries, where are you? Here you are. Aries is a lot bigger. So. So there we have it. This is Orcus. Now, there's something missing. Unfortunately, in a universe in a box, the uh, moon of this dwarf planet that was actually discovered in 2010 has not really been added yet. And so we may have to add it manually. Now, we don't really know much about uh, the moon and Orcus itself because it's actually far away from us. Uh, but we know that um, the name that has been assigned to it is Vanth. And this is actually, this has been selected by submissions directly to Michael Brown, who is the scientist responsible for finding many of these dwarf planets. And so when the name was chosen by his fans and by the people visiting his, his website, he proposed this name to the International Astronomical Society and they accepted it. So we're going to have to make Vanth from scratch. We're going to actually add a new object here. It's going to be an object somewhat similar in size to uh, Shariklo here. And it's about 9,000 kilometers Away from um, from Orcus, we also need to give them a balanced motion orbit. And uh, what we know about um, Vanth, which this is going to be now, is that it's actually in an almost circular orbit around Orcus. And these two objects are very similar to Pluto and Charon in terms of their size comparison and in terms of the way they uh, orbit each other. So Orcus and Vanth are essentially very similar to Pluto, which is right here and its biggest uh, moon called Charon, which we're going to add right now. So here it is. So Pluto and Charon are very similar to Orcus and Vanth. Now, that's not the only reason why Orcus is actually known as anti-Pluto. As a matter of fact, the main reason why it's known as anti-Pluto is because if I were to enable orbits right now, if I were to move the orbit of Orcus in an alignment that's kind of similar to Pluto. And I don't really see Pluto anymore, but it is somewhere on the inside. Let me find it. There it is. Okay. And so there you go. This is actually the closest I could get them. But if you look at these numbers, what you may notice is that both Orcus 
and Pluto have almost exactly the same type of orbit. So, semi major axis difference here is about 0 0.2, 0 0.4 astronomical units. So, they have um, almost exactly the same distance from the Sun. Their eccentricity is almost exactly the same. Um, their in inclination, their um, orbital period. So, there's almost no difference between their orbits. And really, the main difference is that, first of all, they're kind of opposite of each other. So, Orcus is here. There it is. And Pluto is on the other side. It's right there. And the other main difference is that when Pluto is closest to the Sun, Orcus is the farthest to the Sun. So when Pluto is at its periapsis, Orcus is at its apoapsis and vice versa. When Orcus returns to its periapsis, Pluto is at apoapsis. So they have literally anti-orbits. Their orbits are opposite of each other, and all of this is actually created by Neptune. So the reason why their orbits are so similar and why they're actually kind of opposite of each other is because over billions of years, Neptune forced them into these orbits, and they actually have a very interesting association with the orbit of Neptune. So for every three orbits of Pluto, which I'm going to try to simulate here, let's see if we can do it. For every three times that Pluto orbits around the Sun, so there is Pluto and there is Neptune. And it, it, it obviously it's the same with Orcus. So for every three orbits, Neptune is going to orbit Sun twice. And so this is actually a really interesting pattern that um, many dwarf planets have around, uh, around Pluto, but specifically Pluto and Orcus, because both of these are very similar objects and they have very, very similar orbits. And although we didn't really know about Orcus until possibly 2005, uh, when we actually took a closer look at it, um, we have seen this dwarf planet before. It's actually appeared in many different um, photos from, from previous explorations, and I think the earliest picture of um, Orcus that we have today is from as early as 1951. It just people didn't realize that what they were looking at, but it was actually Orcus. So, Interestingly, Pluto is very, 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 very similar to Orcus. The only main difference, I guess, between them is that Orcus is a lot smaller. So if I were to place Pluto here, Pluto is quite significantly larger than Orcus. So um, technically, Orcus is a little bit similar to or more similar to Pluto's moon, Charon, um, but not as, not as big as Pluto itself. So even Charon is actually bigger than Orcus. But nevertheless, uh, we do think that this is actually a dwarf planet, meaning that it possibly has a spherical shape. It also has very similar composition to Pluto. Um, maybe not as red-ish, not as um, bright either. Its um, albedo is only about 30% or 0.31, whereas Pluto is a lot more reflective. Albedo re refers to how reflective the ob object is, how much light is reflected. So Pluto reflects about 50% of the light, whereas Orcus only reflects about 30% and also possibly has very different composition on the surface and uh, inside. So we know that both Pluto and um, Orcus have water, but since we've actually had a flyby past Pluto, uh, we obviously know a lot more about it. We even know um, a lot about the surface composition here. In terms of Orcus, we can only guess what is on its surface. And um, we're thinking, or at least that's what we found so far, we know that there is um, crystalline water on the surface and uh, quite possibly quite a lot of dark tholines, which would make this dwarf planet kind of dark brownish, very similar to these dark spots on Pluto. But that's just a guess. Th um, those are just the things that we know about other dwarf planets that we can kind of estimate about this one as well. And I guess before we finish this video, I just wanted to briefly explain the name Orcus, why it's named Orcus and what it means. Orcus is actually the equivalent of Pluto, but in a different mythology. So Pluto is from Roman mythology, whereas Orcus is from Etruscan mythology. And Etruscans were the people who uh, Romans actually conquered early on. They were um, Italic people. They lived very close to Rome, uh, but they, they got conquered by, by Rome quite early on, and they kind of absorbed their mythology and combined it with their own. And so Orcus was the equivalent of Pluto. It, um, it was the god um, kind of related to underworld. And uh, this particular god was actually represented as a kind of a hairy bearded giant that essentially preserved the underworld. And this god also had an interesting uh, winged female demon that essentially guided people to the Etruscan underworld. And the name of this demon was Vanth. And this is actually the reason why 
Vanth was the name chosen for um, the satellite that we've discovered orbiting around Orcus. And so essentially that is all I wanted to say about Orcus and um, about, oh no, oh no. Okay, that was expected about Orcus and Vanth. And uh, they're now going to obviously collide with Pluto and become one mega dwarf planet. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all of your help. As you know, we've recently reached 20,000 subscribers, and I really wanted to thank all of you for your support over, over the months, over the year that I've been making these videos. Um, and if, you, if you actually want to join the community, don't forget there's a Facebook group where I often um, communicate with all of you. I always answer Facebook questions. It's, a, it's become a little bit more difficult to answer individual comments on YouTube, but if you do want to comment on something or if you want to ask a question or make a suggestion, I think Facebook is probably the best way for you to do this. There's also the Patreon page, and if you would like to support this channel and help it grow, uh, you can always support me through Patreon as well. And um, this obviously helps me purchase better equipment later on and will create higher quality videos in the future. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all your help. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. Bye-bye. And here comes Vent. Oh, look at that. He missed. Or it missed. Or she missed. Vent is actually a female character, so technically it's a she. Oh, okay. So it looks like um, Pluto is going to have a very eccentric satellite orbiting around it every once in a while. And this is going to be pretty awesome.